Please be seated. There's a funny quote from one of Gandhi's assistants that I've been thinking about this week. If only Gandhi knew how much it costs to keep him in poverty. <laughs> there was a system of support that maintained the teaching and activism of Gandhi. And it didn't just appear. Jesus, too, had a system of support that sustained his ministry. Homes were opened, benefactors provided resources, and people gave what they could in order to feed the community. Gathering in community, especially in challenging times, takes resources. And we are in challenging times. The recent election highlights our divisions, yet our community, where we focus on belonging, compassion, and generosity, is where we can find a kind of grounding and purpose that sustains us. The widow didn't give to Jesus individually. She gave to support this kind of countercultural community that prioritizes love over division. Amid an unjust economic system, she gave out of a deep sense of purpose. And Jesus highlights her generosity in order to expose that system, one that is still familiar today. Our culture of wealth and power persists, leaving many people in need. And Jesus' message to love one another calls us to question it. Just as the widow chooses generosity in a difficult economic circumstance, we too can consider giving from a place of gratitude, allowing love to flourish beyond our immediate desires and connect us both across generations and ideologies. It's a choice to contribute to the world as it could be, bridging what divides us and nourishing what unites us. Facing our own patterns of greed is challenging. As we talked about with St. Francis, living in a poverty of opinions challenges our greed for being right. Giving generously challenges our greed for material status. Awareness of the ways that we participate in our economic system matters as followers of Jesus. And it's a hard lesson, but I've learned to try and face my greed a little more mindfully. It feels like a slight pinch in the top of my abdomen. I kind of notice my chest curving in. Awareness of these cues helps me to label greed and be a little bit more examining of my thoughts and my actions in that moment. Here's a silly example that I struggle with. I love huckleberry things. It's my favorite food in the world. And I have a lot of huckleberry things. Jams, jellies, pie filling, hot cocoa mix, lemonade mix, candies, sodas. I mean, really, you name it. But then I'm so scared of losing them, so I hoard them. <laughs> And my husband finally called me out on this after some jam went bad. It takes a long time for jam to go bad. <laughs> but what's all that huckleberry stuff worth if I don't enjoy it and share it? It's super uncomfortable to face that challenge of grief. I think Sometimes we can do all sorts of mental gymnastics to try and justify what we're doing and to push away that feeling. But really, we can face it with compassion. We don't need to feel ashamed. It's a very natural human thing to want a lot of huckleberry things. <laughs> but in the face of that challenge, giving is the antidote 
and that frees me from my pain. My first week here, I learned that one of our youth also shares my passion for huckleberries. So the next Sunday, I showed up and shared lots of candy. <laughs> Greed reinforces patterns of separation and division. And it's important to attend to greed in our lives with tenderness, recognizing the ways that it keeps us apart and unhappy. Greed is wanting more of what we like, and hatred arises as a response of wanting to get rid of what we don't like. I hate those dates that my husband keeps in the cupboard. I could have so much more room for huckleberry things. <laughs> These two go together a lot more dangerously than we may realize. When we are unconscious of their control over us, we are not free to live into Jesus' ministry of love. Which is why Jesus calls out the system that perpetuates greed and division. Awareness gives us the opportunity to be free from it. Greed is, is often rooted in a sense of scarcity. But choosing generosity, even amid that feeling, helps break its hold on our hearts. It reminds us that love and kindness are boundless resources that grow through our actions. Giving what we have, however small, extends love beyond our immediate reach and it affirms that love itself does not diminish. This giving becomes a practice of gratitude for what was and a hope for what still can be, a seed that nurtures love into an ever-present living force. We can reflect on the widow giving through the lens of countering a greed and division-driven economy. We can also reflect on her through the lens of exemplifying generosity and added abundance, so that we give and we nurture the future of love. We can also reflect on her through the lens of our current U.S. climate. While across the congregation we may have very different responses to the election, we are brought together by our commitment to community, to belonging. This is a challenge, and we need to be honest within ourselves about our greed for being right, and engage in a practice of generosity and curiosity. The widow lets go of what is most precious, her. What are your precious opinions, fears, joys, depressions, angers, righteousnesses, happinesses? What is so precious to you that you are clinging to it tightly? Is your greed to be right? Blinding you from your fear, from blinding you to the fear that your neighbor is experiencing? Or is your attachment to anger blocking you from hearing the concerns of your neighbor? Our culture of division persists, leaving many people isolated from their neighbors and loved ones. And Jesus' message to love one another calls us to question it. Just as the widow chooses generosity in a difficult political circumstance, we too can consider giving as an act of letting go of being right, allowing love to flourish beyond our immediate political affiliation and connect us both across generations and ideologies. Jesus' emphasis on the widow giving all that she had helps us to bear witness to our own clinging, compassionately loosening our grip enough to remember our dedication to love beyond the politics that will change year to year. Letting go of our need to be right, or letting
letting go of a percentage of our income. We are still in stewardship season. <laughs> Both are forms of giving that fuel Jesus' counter-cultural narrative and flood our community with the spirit of generosity. Facing these challenges is hard. It takes dedication to this difficult path of love. In this way, giving allows love to flourish in the world, connecting us to one another across time and across space.